We're going to continue working on solving these NMR problems. In these problems, we have a molecular formula, we have a proton NMR, and then we also have a carbon NMR, and we are using that information to come up with the structure of the molecule. Let's start by calculating the HDI for this molecule. We have 10 carbon atoms. 10 times 2 is 12, plus... 10 times 2 is not 12. 10 times 2 is 20, plus 2 is 22. That's the maximum number of hydrogen atoms. We have 14 hydrogen atoms, uh, which gives us an HDI of 4. When we see an HDI of 4, we typically think that we have a benzene ring. When we look at the proton NMR, we can see this peak here around 7. This is definitely a peak that corresponds to a benzene ring. Benzene ring peaks typically show up in this area right here, somewhere between six and a half, seven and a half, and they are always funny looking, like, you know, really kind of noisy, jaggedy peaks, uh, and they have weird splitting patterns, like just multiplet instead of being something like a singlet or a doublet or whatever. So this um, is consistent with the idea of a benzene ring. Also, if we have a benzene ring, we should see peaks for the carbon atoms that are in the same general area about, you know, this far down the spectrum. So if we go down to the carbon NMR, we can see we've got peaks right here. These peaks are also going to be corresponding to benzene. They're in the same general portion of the spectrum. While we're down here, let's just take a look at our carbon NMR because remember, we don't get a lot of information from carbon NMR. Mostly we just get the number of different types of carbon atoms. One, two, three, four and then all of our benzenes right there. That's just kind of how I'm gonna write it. One, two, three, four, plus our benzenes. So we've got like four types of carbons plus the carbon atoms that are in the benzene ring. For our proton, um, we can start by just kind of um, focusing on that benzene ring. We know that we have the benzene ring and it's integrating at five, which tells us that there are five hydrogen atoms on the benzene ring, like that. So we've got that. We'll just put a carbon right there. So we've got that part of the molecule figured out. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of our peaks. From left to right, we have one, that is a sextet, that means N is five. So that means we have one hydrogen atom with five neighbors. And one hydrogen atom with five neighbors, um, that probably means that we have one hydrogen atom that has three neighbors to one side and two neighbors to the other side. So it's probably something like that. I'll stick that down here. Uh, next, we have two that is a quintet. A quintet is five, so that means this guy has four neighbors. Four neighbors is a little bit trickier to figure out, and so we don't really know for sure. We know we have two, but having four neighbors, we don't know if that means that there's a CH3 and a CH, which would be four neighbors or it could be a CH2 with a CH2. And so I'm just gonna not draw that one yet. We're gonna just kind of see if that one figures itself out. Here we have a doublet. So that means that N equals one. So this is three hydrogen atoms with one neighbor. Look, three hydrogen atoms with one neighbor right there. All right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna redraw that because these two parts definitely go together. And then we have uh, a triplet. Triplet means that N equals two. So this is three hydrogen atoms that have two neighbors. So let's draw that. And we've got three hydrogen atoms and they have two neighbors. So in terms of trying to figure out this quintet, we still haven't really figured, the, this is the only part we haven't really figured out yet. The quintet, um, actually let me, cause this is getting kind of complicated. Let me put some marks around. So this one hydrogen corresponds to this peak right here. And this, oops, this CH3 group decided was this peak right here, three with one neighbor. And then we have a triplet 
with two neighbors. That's this peak. So the only thing that we haven't actually matched up yet is this CH2 group and this CH2 group, which they are probably the same. This CH2 group probably is this CH2 group. And we also haven't analyzed this quintet two hydrogens, which is probably this two hydrogens, which is probably the same one right here with four neighbors. So what we've drawn up here, the CH2 group has one, two, three neighbors. And in this part here is neighbor number four. So that's definitely confirmation that this matches up right here. So we could just take this and we're just gonna stick it like right there. This is it. So you can fit them right on top of each other. So here is our, I'm gonna go ahead and erase these black boxes because they don't point in the right direction anymore. This is the alkyl group. We have this one point of attachment that we haven't figured out anything for. And we also have a benzene ring that we have to attach. So that means that the benzene ring is going to go right here. Now let's just count up our carbons and make sure everything makes sense. Count up our hydrogens. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten carbon atoms. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen hydrogens. And in terms of the number of types of carbon atoms we have, we have one, two, three, four plus the benzene ring. We have one more of these um, sets to go. We have this one, C4H9Br. Let's analyze our integration, or our um, HDI. Four times two is eight, plus two is 10. Maximum hydrogen, we have nine, and we have one bromine. So we have an HDI of zero. Our integration is done for us. It's a two, a one, and a six, and we're not given information about the splitting. And it's really hard to see what the splitting is, um, but they're all split, so none of these are singlets. Let's look at how many different types of carbon atoms we have. We have one, two, three types of carbon atoms, and we have four total carbon atoms, which tells me that the molecule has some sort of symmetry to it. Not a lot of symmetry, but there is some symmetry. Two carbon atoms are exactly the same. Uh, for the integration, whenever I see integration of a 6, I think I've mentioned this before, I always assume that that means that I have two methyl groups that are attached to the same carbon atom. And this would also account for three types of carbons. Um, two of the carbon atoms would be exactly the same if we had a situation like this. So I think that that's what this corresponds to right there. Now, I don't know anything about what's going on here with this hydrogen atom. It does look like this peak, or this carbon atom, I mean. It does look like this peak has splitting. So I think that there's probably a hydrogen atom right here. Uh, there, fortunately, this is a pretty small molecule. Like, we don't have a lot of options about what's going on. Like I've already found three carbon atoms and there's only one more carbon to go. So I'm just gonna stick stick carbon number four right here. Uh, and let's see how we're doing. We've got two more hydrogen atoms that we need to account for. And we also have a bromine atom. So let's just do it like that. And I, I, think, I think that's our only option here. This would be one, two, three types of carbon atoms. It would be one, two, three types of hydrogens integrating at six, one, and two. These two, with the bromine on them, would be the most deshielded, shifted further to the left. Um, this peak right here would be split by all kinds of stuff, so it'd be really messy, and it looks pretty messy. Uh, these six would be a doublet, which I, I, could, I could get on board with this being a doublet. Uh, and these two would also be a doublet. That kind of looks like it might be a doublet. So I feel like this is probably the structure.